Welcome back fellow time travelers and comic book aficionados. We're going to go back in time to the Silver Age looking at the publisher Charlton Comics. In my last video we were in 1993 where we saw flashy foil covers, gimmicks, polybags, and a lot of different comics. I want to uh, go back further in time where the artwork was detailed and told a story around the Atomic Age and Silver Age. I'm going to use my time machine to travel back to around the late 50s and early to mid 60s to explore Charlton's great treasures. Charlton Publications also had the artists, the distributors, editors, everybody under one roof to produce gems of comics. So let's get away from the 90s and the current time and go back to a time where the art was truly great. Before we put our time tokens into the time machine, who here is a fan of Charlton Comics? I can't wait to see the artwork of Dick Giordano, also Rocco Mastroserio, Steve Ditko, the list goes on, Vince Alicia, who did a lot of inking, and also the pseudonym of Charles Nicholas, which you commonly see in most of the Charlton publications. It's a rich time with great stories, including space and atomic age, uh, transitions, also Godzilla-like stories as well with Gorgo. So hang on everybody, let's take our time token here and let's get to it. And the first comic in the queue features Space Adventures number 18 featuring Rocky Jones. And this book is from September of 1955. You can see the cover has the action right there. This is drawn by Dick Giordano and also John D'Agostino as they collaborated on this cover. This series right here is based on an American sci-fi program that spanned from February to November of 1954. And here in the year 55, we see him in his own comic book adapted by Charlton. So looking at the viewer screen right here, we could see the artwork of John D'Agostino and he worked on Timmy the Timid Ghost, as well as Attack, which was a combat magazine put out by Charlton, as well as Atomic Mouth. So we're right at the cusp of the uh, Atomic Age going into the Silver Age, and you can see the great artwork and splash pages in here. John D'Agostino and Dick Giordano really took the helm with a lot of the Charlton titles and made for a lot of great action. Yeah, I can't get enough of these uh, pages right here, the artwork and the inset, and as you turn the page, they were just so artfully done. Rocky Jones spanned 39 episodes on TV, and they were about a half hour long, and it was at the time where space was an exciting theme in American culture. For our second book in the queue, Speeding Ahead from 1955, we're going to go to 1959, particularly July, where we have this issue right here. And this is Space Adventures number 29. Take a look at this cover by Maurice Whitman. Just screams a lot of sci-fi action. You see the ape-like figure, the ant, and the miniature rocket right on the bottom here. And this was a great cover. In the interior artwork, as we open the page, we can see a big splash page with First Stop Mars. And again, we have Dick Giordano and Rocco, or Rocky Mastroserio, doing a lot of the ink work. And when you look at the pages and you see the characters, you can tell it's Rocco Mastroserio by some of the inking and the hatching. Some of the artwork can be more plain from other pencilers, but you see a little bit more detail there. Looking at the viewer, you can see more of the line work and just the sci-fi uh, elements with the astronauts or space helmet, exploring a foreign topography and terrain. And that's what made Charlton Comics interesting. It took the imagination and put it into the pages with pencil and ink. Just take a look right there. All those large panels and details is what makes Space Adventures a lot of fun and one of my personal favorites. And for our third book in the queue featuring Charlton Comics, we have Gorgo Number no. 5 that came out in 1962. And this character is actually based off of a movie that came out a year earlier in 61, which is a large T-Rex-like Godzilla character that came from the Atlantic Ocean and wreaks havoc on Earth. And Gorgo is actually a good character fighting off evil nemesis like this one here. You can see the eyeball 
staring in the teeth and kind of a tentacled type creature where we have the beginnings of this Godzilla action. And Charlton Comics was right there to pick it up and adapt it into this uh, series featuring Gorgo. Joe Sinnott did the artwork and Vince Coletta did the inking. And you could just feast your eyes on all the action there. And I love opening up the book because we're greeted by this all-out splash page where we have Gorgo starting out 36 pages of goodness. And you can see the tanks, of course, rolling in in a green monster, kind of like the Hulk in a way, where you have humanity trying to defend and figure out the mysterious. And it's just great. You can see more work here in the viewfinder as we look at the artwork here. Uh, Bill Molno is credited for some of the artwork. Joe Sinnott uh, actually is a penciler rather than an inker. And Vince Coletta following with a simple line work that he's known for. So take a look at the beauty of Gorgo, issue number five from Charlton Comics, 1962 Silver Age Beauty. And for our next book in the queue, there's nothing unusual about Charlton Comics except Unusual Tales number 34. And look at this cover. It's an oversized cover where we have a giant professor in the background holding uh, two helpless victims or lab experiments. And this is quite a sci-fi shock cover and artfully done by Rocco Mastroserio. And it's just neat to look at it. Just looking at it in the golden size book format, but it's really a Silver Age book. You can come to appreciate all that illusion that the artist uh, prepared here. The year is 1962 and we open up to see the splash page and we see that red bar that Charlton Comics was known for to divide up their stories. Usually when you get to that end, you know the next chapter, the next story, and you can see some of the artwork here. Taking a look at the viewfinder, you can see a lot more. The artwork is different than Master Serio's art. You don't see that polished detail that you saw in the cover, but it's probably by Charles Nicholas or Vince Alicia creating this artwork. It's, it's almost like an in-house school, penning and inking and drawing the interior artwork. Take a look at it for yourself. Take a look through the pages here. Great sci-fi Charlton action. And the nostalgia continues with Space Wars number 26. And we're greeted by another Dick Giordano cover with a viewfinder and spaceships in the background and even aliens looking on right there. So this cover is from June of 1964. And we're still in the Space Age atomic themes going on. We have the splash here and the artwork going on right over here. You can see again more of the artwork, the pages, even some of the advertisements right there. So Space Wars also featured Steve Ditko's artwork in other issues, past and future, and was just another title aside from Gorgo, Space Adventure. We also have uh, this title right here. It's also a neat story in this book is this vacation apparel right here. Kind of looks like they're on vacation with the sunglasses and the palm tree. But uh, that is Charlton Comics for you. It just takes the adventure to another level. And you can never get by with uh, whizzing rockets too. All right, fellow time travelers, we have yet another title from Charlton Comics. And that is right here in bright red, Mysteries of the Unexplored Worlds. Issue number 43. Uh, Dick Giordano illustrated this cover. We could already see him taking the lead on a lot of them from Space Wars to Space Adventures. And here yet another title of the Silver Age, as you see the 12 cent stamp, uh, right there. And this is the reoccurring dream. Uh, the story is actually the dream that wouldn't go away. And that's portrayed on the cover here. And looking inside quite a dream. I don't know if it's a good dream or a bad dream. I see some smiles and grins here and the swirling effect on the cover. So again, the artwork is different from the cover artist, probably uh, Bill Molno or Vince Alicia or Charles Nicholas that's done the inter internal uh, artwork. 
Joe Gill is credited for most of the stories, and in this 36 pages, there are about four to five stories per book, including a uh, feature in our outer space. So looking at the viewfinder, you can see the different artwork and division, also seeing rockets and space again, but now also some sci-fi and Twilight Zone-like stories as well. So taking a look, you can see more of Charlton at its finest in the Silver Age, and let me know what you think. Do you like the in internal artwork? Do you like the covers more? Or do you like both? So let me know in the comments below as we've been exploring Charlton in the Silver Age. And interesting to know, Charlton stories are being reprinted today in 2022 with this issue here in Classic Pulp. Mysteries of Unexplored Worlds, issue number 34, is printed again as a facsimile in this issue. The artwork of Dick Giordano, John D'Agostino, stories by Joe Gill, and the artwork even by Steve Ditko are in the pages here. As you see the splash page, you see the recognizable Steve Ditko artwork as he was with Charlton. And we have a facsimile, folks. And turning the pages, you can tell it's pretty much uh, Charlton from some of the stories inside and that red bar logo. This is my favorite part of the book, uh, looking at this interior right here. Just love the monster uh, wrapping. The lady is fearless as she's blasting away. And uh, just some great, great art. Charlton at his finest and reprinted folk right now. So Jay Werner is the, um, the distributor and author of this one shot. And it advertises a, a larger, bigger anthology in the back. So Charlton is uh, making a comeback in some of the reprints that we've seen. And again, you have some of the spaceships that are in the background, some of the galaxy and the cosmos. So it's pretty neat to see it almost reprinted with the same grain and texture of how the books were in the past. So they're doing time travel right. I, I enjoyed uh, picking up this cheaper copy for $4 as opposed to the Mysteries of Unexplored Worlds, issue number 34, that goes for more than $40. But how about that? Charlton, Silver Age, in 2022. Did you know that Charlton was not always about monsters in space or haunted timid ghosts or atomic mice, but also did a lot of gags and humor in this cartoon carnival, usually one panel cartoon, typically those you would find in the New Yorker magazine or even Life magazine, just more humorous and whimsical. And this whole book is actually dedicated to 300 uh, individual comics. Some are risque, some are gags about married life and about flirting and uh, just uh, funny gags and comics some of which might not be able to get away with today, but the gags are quite humorous and the artwork is quite funny. In most of the weekly magazines in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, they were highlighted by individual humor right there. Pages we can see joke after joke. The artwork is pretty quick and gesturely. It kind of pokes fun at everyday life and relationships too, including this librarian getting ready for surgery. So Charlton is uh, taking some prints and republishing them right here. Here's our kleptomaniac stealing the psychiatrist's sofa. We also have little jokes here. Nice to feel wanted. There are only a handful of cartoon carnival issues published by Charlton Comics. Typically they had 200 to 300 uh, single panel cartoons in the books and it's a really nice square bound flipping through the pages you can feel how thick the book is and a lot of gags and jokes and it was very different from what Charlton uh, published 
earlier in terms of space adventures and monsters. But I always enjoyed just a quick read of some of these cartoons. And it's kind of a nice rare treat that Charlton provided with us. You could see already the versatility of the entertainment that Charlton Comics brought us in the Silver Age. This came out in the spring of 1963. So the 60s marked a fun time. We see Marvel picking up speed. We see DC already distinguished. And Charlton uh, publishing away in a, in a less expensive, easier to pick up format. Eventually, titles were picked up such as Popeye and the rights to characters that include Blondie, the Timid Ghost, for example, Ghostly Haunts, Ghostly Tales. There's, there's plenty of other titles that made up more of a Bronze Age uh, to come. But in the Silver Age, it was all about space and atomic wonder and the cosmos. And the sky was the limit for Charlton Comics. Thank you for watching this video and for exploring the different books in the queue as we traveled in time. Thanks again for watching and happy reading.